The disparity in quality going from Secret Invasion to Loki Season 2 gave me insane whiplash. On one hand, we have a terribly executed mess that had a crisis behind the scenes, and then on the other, we have a triumph in storytelling that tells a singular and spectacular vision for a lovable character. Because that's why Loki works so well over so many of these other projects. It has a deeply engaging story that has a thoroughly evolving main character. Loki at the start of the show and to the end of Season 2 are practically opposite characters and that kind of journey, written in a compelling manner, is amazing. This is going into what I think is the best aspect of Loki Season 2, which is Eric Martin's writing of characters, their journeys, and their internal conflicts. Everyone on the roster besides maybe one or two characters have fully fleshed out arcs with tangible motivations that make them riveting and likable characters. This is what I would identify as Marvel's major issue in that most character work has taken a backseat as they prioritize screen time in other areas. Recent examples being Ant-Man Quantum Mania where Scott and Cassie's relationship feels very shallow, and in the Marvels, Carol Danvers' primary internal conflict is wholly underdeveloped. Then, when you look at Marvel's recent great movies like Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and No Way Home, they tell engrossing stories that are primarily driven by their ever-evolving characters. Loki Season 2 I think falls right into that category of greatness, because of how excellent its character work is. Loki's villain to hero arc is a really hard thing to pull off because it requires a complex dive into the psyche of his character. He goes from someone who desperately tried to grasp at control and purpose in his life through any form of evil means, all the way to someone who only accepts power out of sheer necessity of doing the right thing. And since this was done in a show's setting, it gave the creators enough time to fully explore this rich character arc to its full potential. We actually have long and intriguing dialogue scenes that are imbued with important revelations for our characters. Like most dialogue scenes between two characters, generally lead to one of them changing immensely. Examples being Loki sparking the interest of what Mobius' life was like outside of the TVA, Loki's talk with Sylvie in which she learns that purely destroying something won't solve problems, and Mobius driving in the final nail to Loki's arc in that one's purpose is primarily burden over glory, and the burden is inevitable. Delivering Loki's final revelation in that he has to become a time god and be burdened with taking care of the entire multiverse. A truly selfless act. These are just a few examples, but every episode is packed full of these incredible dialogue scenes. Now, some are obviously better than others, and I'll get into what I think are some of the show's faults towards the latter half of the video. But the batting average is still really high, so much to the point that it's admirable that primarily character and dialogue driven scenes carry the show so much. Like looking at any other Marvel show, they generally have to interject some kind of artificial action to make the episode more exciting. However, Loki doesn't need to do this because of how high quality the drama is in the show. Easily the best and most refreshing climax in any Marvel show is the showdown between He Who Remains and Loki and Sylvie. There's no crazy spectacle or action set piece to entertain the audience, and it's purely dialogue. And Loki Season 2 somehow elevates it and adds an additional layer onto that finale from the first season. I honestly was kind of skeptical going into the finale of Loki Season 2, but it far and away exceeded my expectations. The second finale confrontation with He Who Remains really reminds me of the final showdown between Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty. In that movie, they are playing these complex mind games, where they are constantly countering each other. And with the Season 2 finale, it reveals He Who Remains' true plan, in that he knew Loki would end up coming back to stop Sylvie because of the looms failsafe and destroying all of time. It actually makes He Who Remains a more evil character because it seems like he did this out of pure boredom. He knew the outcome would inevitably end the way it would, and he's doing this to torture Loki in that he now has to kill someone he cares about to save all of time. However, like in Sherlock Holmes, this action made by the villain that comes across as seemingly being a checkmate can actually be countered by our hero. This is the kind of writing that is outstanding, in which the viewer doesn't know a logical way in overcoming the conflict, and the hero has to come up with something that is clever. For Loki, his solution to He Who Remains' conundrum isn't just a clever solution, but it's also an integral step for Loki in finishing his character arc. It ironically acts as a layup of sorts, for Loki in finding his glorious purpose and finishing his ultimate redemption arc. Overcoming conflict is one thing, but if he can also make it expertly tie into the main character's arc, then that's great writing. Which is what Eric Martin achieves here. 
along with the monumental task of creating an hour worth of riveting dialogue, which is essentially what the ending is. It just requires a lot more skill and artistry to write something of this caliber over something like the WandaVision finale, which feels significantly more convoluted and messy narratively. And I'm being generous bringing that up as a comparison because that's one of the better ones. Also, for the season 2 finale, I love how they essentially turned half of the episode into Groundhog's Day, which is one of my favorite movies, but applied it to a hardcore science fiction setting. Seeing Loki ram his head into a wall trying to overcome this mind-boggling conflict was incredibly engrossing. It would have been nice if the finale was longer, because I feel like the writers downplayed the mental impact of doing the same thing over and over for centuries, but it was still well executed. Maybe Loki is more resilient to long stretches of time because he is a god after all. So, Loki's character arc is obviously outstanding, and the other two main side characters being Mobius and Sylvie are also great of course. Mobius and Loki's dynamic is still very endearing, and the writers lean into that even more for season 2. At times it did feel a little forced, an example being Mobius leaving during a fight scene to go find a bike with two seats for him and Loki, while in other moments it felt more natural. As long as the writers weren't going out of their way for any shenanigans, I felt like it was fine. But for Mobius overall, I think it was pretty genius in that the writers were able to showcase his entire life on the timeline while also building Loki's character and overcoming time slipping. It was very efficient and offered a significant amount of value for Mobius as a character, as we got to witness his entire backstory. And the same thing applies for other minor side characters. Like up until episode 5, I was kind of sad that Kihai Kwan's character Obi was basically just a character that rattled off complicated exposition. So the hope is that after you prune yourself, the extractor will pull you into the present. Of course. Yeah. But episode 5 fleshes him out and makes him more understandable as a character, and not just a vessel to explain different mechanics within the world. Because he's honestly just a downgraded version from his character in everything everywhere all at once. However, I think episode 5 luckily redeems him. Sylvie I think has a good continuation and her arc of slowly diffusing from a destructionist mentality was really well done and explored. Her final scene with Loki was heartfelt, and perfectly punctuates the ending of her arc in aiding Loki in realizing that destroying something is okay if you replace it with something better. Now for the last character I'll address that I don't think was very well done was Renslayer. It feels like her villain arc was nowhere near as complex as the other characters in the show because she essentially just wants power and to control the TVA, even though she's literally causing the TVA's downfall by delaying Mobius and Loki and fixing the loom. I know she doesn't trust them, but it feels like a contradiction in that she wants to restore the TVA to its former glory, while also being the one that's causing its downfall. I guess there is some irony there, even though it doesn't feel very logical from a character point of view. Outside of her lust for power, there's really nothing else about her to make her fascinating. The revelation about her mind being wiped I thought was a good twist for the character, but it again only feeds into that lust for power. So if anything, it kind of feels like Renslayer was used as a roadblock conflict and drawing out the story until the loom explodes because without her, the show would be much shorter. Which this is fine, I just wish she was more compelling. Her state in the show was pretty underwhelming considering how much screen time she had, and especially how abrupt her ending was. The writers were kind of like, oh yeah, and by the way, Renslayer dies after being sent to the void. That's it. Then, her and Miss Minutes' lust towards Victor Timely was very odd and off-putting, to the point that it was not needed at all. So even though Renslayer was partially lacking, I think Loki Season 2's characters were still outstanding all around. Another aspect that goes hand in hand with the characters is the acting. Out of the entire MCU, I think Tom Hiddleston is easily the best actor. The amount of range and raw emotion that is constantly required for the character in every scene is flooring. It obviously helps that the writing allows this, but there are so many beautiful close-ups of Loki throughout the season in which he puts you into a trance with his amazing acting. Tom Hiddleston has a mastery understanding of everything, whether it be subtlety, gravitas, charisma, pacing, great delivery of lines, and nails sorrow with ease. He's literally a flawless actor and it's rare to be this consistently floored. I know that acting awards for the Emmys is extremely crowded from how many great shows are running, but it would honestly feel like a snub if Tom Hiddleston doesn't get a Best Lead Actor nomination. Unfortunately though, I feel like the voters will automatically look past this show just because of the Marvel brand not being what it used to be. Without Tom Hiddleston, the show would be practically nothing, and he perfectly sells the anguish and turmoil Loki as a character is constantly going through. 
Then other standouts I would say are definitely Jonathan Majors and Sofia Martino. I know the controversy around Jonathan Majors is bad, but that doesn't take away from the fact that he did a great job in Season 2. At first I found Victor Timely to be kind of annoying, but his wholesomeness quickly grew on me, and I loved how Jonathan got to revisit He Who Remains again. Sofia Martino, like Tom Hiddleston, delivers deeply emotional moments with ease, and they always make a great pairing. It's just a little unfortunate she wasn't as heavily featured in Season 2, but that's fine since that's what made sense for the story. Then, other actors who weren't as prominent in the story still did a great job. One of my favorite examples is the scene where all the prisoners get killed, and the filmmakers decide to only show the reactions of both Wanmi and Raphael, who perfectly mirror the horror they're witnessing. Now, I'll go into one more great aspect about Loki Season 2, before going into some faults I had with the season. And the last great thing I want to dive into is the production value of the show. Loki easily blows every other MCU production out of the water, because this is the only show that actually feels like a show. They're constructing numerous real sets that are reused, instead of constantly going to random locations to film scenes that are in turn in doll locations because they're only used once. Building these sets also probably saves them quite a bit of money, so that they can then spend it on making the CGI look great. Because throughout the show it looked pretty spectacular, and I especially loved the spaghetti unraveling of people being erased from time. It visually looked cool and was creative. The only CGI moment that was very odd was actually the very beginning of Season 2, where Loki jumps off of the TVA tower and lands into a flying car. This shot immediately scared me from how rough it looked, as if a beginner in Blender made it. I would say that the moment right after this, where a practical car crashes into a real set, redeems the janky looking shot. But yeah, the overall visual look of the show is of such a high quality and has a strong visual identity because of its unique and exotic locations. Similar obviously to Season 1, even though I would argue that Season 1 visually was more memorable than Season 2. There is an entirely different cinematographer and different directors that in turn make the show feel different visually, but I still think it looks good. I don't think the vast majority of viewers will notice a major shift, although to me, the first season looked a bit more dramatic in terms of its lighting for different scenes. While Season 2 feels more loose and is directed and shot with an ensemble of characters taken into account. So going into what I think is the main fault of the season, and I know this video is titled as being a triumph of a show, but I don't think season 2 is a flawless 10 out of 10. The first half of the season in comparison to the latter half I think is weaker, and there are a few reasons for this. Firstly, the plot of episodes 2 and 3 were primarily subplots that were there to buy time until the ending of the show. Now you may immediately disagree with that assessment, so let me explain. In episode 2, Loki and Mobius spend half of the episode questioning Brad about where Sylvie is and also uncover a sudden conflict that there are loyalists killing branching timelines. There's not a lot of setup for this development, especially for Brad's character. It feels as though we skipped over an episode as this random background character becomes an integral centerpiece out of nowhere. So you spend half the time confused as to if you miss something and why we're spending so much time with him. Then, after this conflict is resolved, the leader of these loyalists becomes irrelevant within the story, as Renslayer comes in to kill her. Now, is the writing for these scenes bad by any means? Absolutely not. It just doesn't feel like an efficient usage of time in terms of storytelling. There is some importance for this episode in that it ropes Sylvie back into the narrative, they're able to find Renslayer, and establishes Brad as a character. But I can't help but escape the feeling that we're just spending time on a subplot for this episode. And the same thing applies for episode 3. I know Victor Timely is a pretty important character, but the writers only make him that way because they randomly require the creator's aura to unlock the blast doors. The writers only do this to give Victor Timely importance within the narrative because besides that, he doesn't really offer anything to the story. He helps out with some scientific problem solving, but that's kind of a minor point that you can just write to have Obi think of. So for episode 3, we essentially have this entire artificial side quest to get a character who has random importance because the the writers willed it to happen. Now again, the time spent here in the show doesn't mean it was bad, just in comparison to the latter half of season 2, which features a clean and efficient narrative, the first half feels inferior. The writers still include solid character developments and overall well-written scenes, so I think it partially alleviates this fault. Also, I think it could have been a narrative upgrade if they had Mobius be the one who goes out on the catwalk in episodes 4 and 6, instead of Victor. 
Mobius's loss at the end of episode 4 would be much more of a motivator for Loki, because Mobius is like his best friend, along with having much higher stakes because we as an audience care more about Mobius, rather than the character who just showed up. That, and imagine how much of a gut punch the ending to episode 4 would be if we thought Mobius died. So, in an overall sense, I don't think Victor Timely ultimately added a lot to the story, and could have been removed from it without much loss being felt. And I feel like I have to keep bringing this up in which I'm not knocking the quality of episodes 2 and 3, and just the relevance and importance to the main plot. Since there are only 6 episodes within the season, spending time on subplots is felt even more, because the story is already short. This in comparison to season 1 where every episode was extremely productive in progressing the main story starts to feel like a stark contrast. Which speaking of this comparison, I think season 1 of Loki is a bit stronger because of the fact that each episode thoroughly engages you from a plot perspective. What I mean by this is that every episode hooks you with a captivating mystery as we keep going further down this alluring rabbit hole of a story, like figuring out what the TVA is, finding out that we are hunting a variant who's a Loki, the Loki variant being a girl and her actually being kind of a protagonist, the timekeepers being fake, overcoming the void in Goliath, and meeting he who remains and getting answers to all of our questions. Season 1 is utterly packed to the brim with an engaging and fun plot that it kind of makes season 2 seem underwhelming in comparison. Where in season 2 the plot is basically just trying to fix the loom with a couple subplots interjected to make the season longer. I wouldn't say this is very bad because the narrative still hits an absolute high point for the finale. Just it's kind of a shame that the first half of the season doesn't really match the high quality of the second half of the season. So that's really the only main flaw I had with season 2 that brought it down slightly, and there were also occasionally some weird moments in terms of writing. Like the surreal scene where Victor insists upon going to get a cup of coffee, where Brad kills Soap and kidnaps Victor. That was honestly one of the weirdest and most contrived scenes in the entire show, that it felt jarring watching that scene in an otherwise great episode. Then another contrived moment that stood out to me was Sylvie sending Renslayer to the end of time instead of killing her. Like she didn't even take her temp pad, and I thought she was intending her being stuck there as a fate being worse than death. But yeah, every now and then the writing falters and the tone can feel a bit weird at times like Victor's chasing in episode 3, but I think the average quality of season 2 is high enough to the point that these sudden quality shifts aren't a major deal. That and the ending is so amazing that you can forgive some of the show's faults. So overall, Loki season 2, even though I'd say is a minor downgrade from season 1, is still far and away better than basically anything Marvel has produced in the last few years. This is the bar of quality that I wish the MCU can regularly operate in. It's kind of unfortunate that Disney is also releasing the Marvels at the same time as the finale of Loki season 2. So they're essentially overshadowing something they made that's great with something that's bad. That just seems baffling to me that they would do that. But thank you for watching. My letterbox, Patreon, and Discord links are in the description, and I also just did a review on the Marvels if you want to check that out too.